So automatically we cannot. But you have, oh yes, yeah, so something I forgot. If you want to do, uh, this is here. So I just show how you cherry pick into a new package and create a package by this way. You have also something which is named tags. So if you do tags config on the file, on a given file, then you have, uh, it will be tag as config. If you want to tag it docs, but docs we will not split it because docs is only uh, user share docs. So it doesn't fit here, but if you want to create new tags because tomorrow we want to do more fine-grained things or uh, I don't know what you want to do with those tags, then there is a, a, a tag macro that goes there and is automatically handled by the bsd.something.mk. Can you specify what the file you're tagging uh, When you're using the files macro, so bsd.files.mk, uh, you have a files group Already right now you have files group, you have the list of files that goes in that group, and you have you have now I added uh, files tags and files package, so that you cherry pick. You say okay, everything in that group goes in that place in that package with those tags. So the only thing I cannot do yet is saying that this only specific uh, file is going to be uh, a, a configuration file. So what I do right now is I create a new group in that case for those that should be merged, install in the same place, so same des des destination directory uh, on the on the target but a new group so maybe it could be better but at least it works Peter it, it seems it seems to me that we can make this a lot more robust and complete by basically having the build target specifically be for staging and then basically require a package or, or some other mechanism to take from the stage area into an install system like for example you were talking about the configuration files issue like you actually install the DMA configuration files with DMA itself. That's what I was proposing that, before. That keeps that simplifies the complexity of our build system, but it basically it basically requires that we use a staging mechanism of, of some sort, be it package or some other mechanism that somebody else may want to use. We use we use the the staging mechanism already. Yeah. So yeah, that's I, know, I know we used reports, but if no, we're talking if you're talking about doing that for um, like at the moment the usual the usual Developer interface is yes, stage well, right? But what I was saying is the old world mechanism of installing directly into a live system yep. goes away because we, in order to keep our own sanity, we put move all the configuration files so that the yep. etc. build goes away, and we then sort of that filter, was, that, filter that through a stage area. That was what I was proposing, saying that we can so use package register, and package register is about to take a. This, if we're going to do this, we should go all the way, and yeah. So that the mechanism is from world through staging yeah. to either package or some other per some other proprietary system or way of doing things or yeah. And in the meta mode, if I'm not mistaken, you build directly uh, into the final into the staging area. So if we mix both meta mode and what we do that, we reduce a lot uh, the the overhead of a staging area because uh, everything is directly built in the right place. So we have the staging by default. Any other questions? I was expecting more backshedding. <laughs> ah. About those version numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah. Both uh, there won't be the interactive part. I mean, uh, if we merge, I, I don't like interactive uh, interactivity in the package system because you might want to run that through uh, Puppet, Ansible, whatever. Well, we could add an, an option for that, but in my opinion, it's not a good thing to do. Uh, so the idea is to uh, add, we discussed uh, that uh, yesterday, for example, and the idea to add a package diff, that this will, be, this will happen, a package resolve, 
that will well, not resolve, but uh, we don't have yet a good name, but something that will allow you to just uh, re um, show you the baseline version of the pack of the file. And uh, so you could see the diff, you could see things like this, but if you want to do manual, something is not able to merge automatically and you'll get into some activity, what will you just install? If we're not 100% sure the merge is okay, we just install the file along with the previous one with the dot new and you'll, you'll use your favorite tool to do the merging, vim diff, whatever. Yeah, so provide provide a, a hook for an external load tool on like a web one. Mm. So that could be also an option, yeah. Yeah, I haven't thought about the hook for external. Could do that. But Merge Master is fairly heavily tied to having um, user source presence as well. So yeah. if the point of this is that it makes installing some packages a first buck and you don't actually need user source in that kind of person, well, Merge Master a bit. You have to figure out that there is not that many files that really needs to be merged. I mean, uh, I've been uh, reviewing uh, most of the thing in the ETC, and out of my memory, I think it should be around 10 files that really needs to be merged. Something like this, maybe more, but not that much, because most of the time we have a same default into default, so if the file is there, it's, your, it's that you have modified it and we don't have ourselves to install one in that place. Wait, Merge Master does three-way merges? I thought no, it, was it doesn't, no. it's not three-way merge. ETC yeah. update does three-way yeah. merge. I know, it, yeah, we use it in the cluster. It's, it's, it's an absolute godsend, but um, yeah, I, Merge Master, I would, I would shed no tears if Merge Master died as a result of this. Yes? I get what you're saying about the same default, but I still wonder about the case of um, where you have the same default saved somewhere and then you have your own config, and then something in an update either either is likely to change whatever you're setting to crazy or set or have whatever you're setting to um, something that changes. And maybe this is just watching what we do when we write the code, but that's a case that I don't know if you've really covered. You get what I'm saying by that. Oh, no. where, where the user so setting no, I, is I wrong because of the upgrade, and even though you may have it you mean you're modifying a file you're not supposed to modify? I'm saying that you have something installed, you have the same default, yeah. and then you have whatever the user set. Yeah. And then if the upgrade of the software makes what the user set irrelevant well, or makes it well, that causes it issues there. I mean yeah, but that's nothing we can really do about it except, ex except having uh, an updating message because uh, right now we have um, updating, and updating is cool. Is very cool thing if you're building it yourself. And this this kind of thing, saying oh the default is changing. If you have something already set, it will be irrelevant with the new version. This is an updating, and if you're going through package, then it's useless for you because you will never read it given it's in the sources. So the idea would be to uh, provide the messages inside the package. So when you do package upgrade, at the end you have the list, and it says. Okay, your let's say DMA configuration uh, is. Uh, if you have already uh, uh, configuration for DMA, the behavior has changed. You might want to review it again, but I can't see how to do that to explain more than a message to do that. That perfectly covers my case, and that just wasn't said. So that perfectly yeah. covers my case. So basically, that's updating, but for the binary packages. Yes. Yeah, so that's something uh, even for ports we need to handle and we don't. So in, a, in one thing on my to-do list, I have a, a flag saying I want to keep somewhere, which will be a lib compat, uh, but somewhere the old version in case of bumps. So this is not done yet into package, but it will happen uh, before uh, we officially ship uh, packages like this, because I think it's important in particular when you're upgrading from a version to a newer version. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you're planning to make these ten files config files, but users do tend to modify files that they shouldn't modify. Like the. Uh, they be aware. They be aware that they are not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, actually, uh, uh, you'll get a warning for sure. Uh, you'll get a warning saying that uh, this file was different when anyway I overwrite it. Right now, that's how it <laughs> you will have something. Package, package check minus S, for example. What, what yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you have you have to do package, package check minus S. Yes, that's something we could probably do. Uh, in my opinion, what we should do is uh, resync the way we do uh, the default configuration file and sync. Everything which should not be modified by the user should not be probably in ETC, and but should be elsewhere. And uh, well, that's a very long-term project if one want to go there. But the idea is to hide from the user everything which is not supposed to modify. And if we want to allow him to modify or override, then we need the software to be able to say, okay, this is my default. This is a place for the user configuration file. If the user want to modify, you will create etc. I don't know where which services, and the default will always be upgraded in I don't know user share, whatever I. My opinion, ETC should be almost empty uh, from everything in the system which is going to be modified and should be kept tracking uh, the packages. But still, yes, we could provide an option that allows to uh, allows to keep a, a copy of an old uh, previous file if it has been modified from the one that was uh, that were installed. Yes. Yeah. MyRepository.com. I think this might actually um, help clarify a little bit more <coughs> your question earlier after hearing what he said. The, what I think is if, if you want to, tr like, so the idea isn't going to be if you're running 11 .0, you're, you're not necessarily going to upgrade automatically to 11.1. It's the, so uh, when we have the release, Yeah. And one, is that eleven one comes out. We could stick a message and say, I've by the way, eleven dot one is out. And here's so we have metadata on the repository. I haven't checked what we have exactly in it. I think uh, uh, Brian or uh, Sepka knows better than I do uh, this part. But uh, it was part. Of the metadata was uh, supposed to be able to define an end of line, and, a and so we can say a message to the user. This is uh, going to be uh, end of line. This that you should switch to this or this one. Yeah, so it, seems to, it seems to me that that would be a really good thing to make sure that we had under control because we could actually put a message on a on a on a repository that's yeah, like for FreeBSD update when you say that okay, you will, you won't have any update after this or after this, yeah. yeah. And that gives the choice to the user and makes them aware of it. So when they type package upgrade, they'll get a message saying, oh, by the way, you're on the repository that's got three months of builds left in it or something like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.